point one has a northing of five zero four six point seven nine and an easting of six three two three point two three and then point three has a northing of five six one five point two seven and an easting of six three zero four point six seven well if I look at step one of the process given on page ten it says I need to subtract the origin northings and eastings from the destination northings and eastings so the scenario has asked if for me to inverse from point one to point three so from is my origin and two is my destination therefore I'm going to subtract origin from destination so my change in northing I take destination minus origin northing so I'm going to take 5615.27 minus 5046.79. Likewise, change in easting will be 6304.67 minus 6323.23. Notice that I'm being very consistent here. Destination minus origin. So I'm going to crunch some numbers if I take uh, five six one five point two seven minus uh, five zero four six point seven nine I'm going to get a positive five six eight point four eight then if I subtract sixty three zero four subtract from it I should say uh, 6323.23 I will get a negative 18.56 feet okay so we have to be very careful to watch that we show the results as being positive or negative as appropriate I'm taking destination minus origin this is my change in northing and this is my change in easting okay then step two says I can determine the length between these points this is step two on page 10 determine the length between uh, point one and three using the change in northing and the change in easting so I'm simply going to apply in step two or if this was step one step two is going to be the distance the you could say the long side of the hypot or the hypotenuse of the right triangle is simply going to be this value squared northing change in northing squared plus the change in easting squared the sum of those two squares take the square root of that and we get the hypotenuse of the right triangle formed by this change in northing and change in easting so if I plug it in it's gonna look like this I'm going to square 568.48 and I'm going to square my negative 18.56 of course you know when I square the negative it becomes positive so then C 568.78 feet now think about this is this reasonable well we have a long skinny triangle here don't we it's 568 feet long and only 1856 feet wide so the hypotenuse of this triangle is very similar to and slightly longer than the long side isn't it so therefore this looks reasonable okay so that's our distance then we need to determine the reference direction consider here that we have a positive change in northing and a negative change in easting consider the figure on the bottom of page 10 in this book shows that if north is here 
and east and south and west occur here. My change in northing will be positive when I move from the center of this system into the northeast quadrant, and it will have a positive change in easting. Here, I will have a negative change in northing and a positive change in easting, won't I? Over here, my change in northing and my change in easting will be negative and negative. Likewise, I'll be positive here and negative there. So, given these conditions, this puts me in the northwest quadrant. And when I am dealing with my uh, trigonometry functions, I want to compute relative to either north or south. So of the two letters here, I can pick the first one. That will be my reference direction. Okay, so that said, we have determined the reference direction. That's step three. Now we're going to find step four, and that is the local angle. I need to explain a thing or two about this local angle by first describing the, the formula we're going to use. The local angle that I call phi is defined as the inverse tangent of the change in easting over the change in northing. It's very, very important that you get change in easting over change in northing. That will give you consistent results. Consider this. If I have something in the northwest quadrant here, my change in easting is this value here. That is a negative change in easting, isn't it? This value is a positive change in northing. That value could also be considered to take place or occur right here, correct? So therefore, if I take a tangent, remember tangent is opposite over adjacent, right? If I take the tangent of an angle using change in easting that you see here over change in northing, this being opposite and this being adjacent, then that means I'm finding this angle. And that angle will be phi. Well, if I do this consistently, change in easting over change in northing, regardless of which quadrant I'm in, then that angle will be relative to north in the northern uh, quadrants and south in the southern quadrants. You'll find this useful here in a little bit. So I'm going to plug in the numbers. In my case, phi is going to be inverse tangent of, let's see, my change in easting was a negative 18.56 feet divided by a positive change in northing of 580, excuse me, 568.48, okay, 568.48. That comes out to be 1 degree, 52 minutes, and it rounds to 12 seconds. Now consider what's happening here. Let's think. I said I've got a change in northing that is about 568 feet, correct, and a very small change in easting that you can see right up here. Well, that's going to give me a very small angle, isn't it? Well, that is that angle right there. 
So we've found the local angle. Now we can determine the line direction. So to make sense of this line direction, I can express it two ways. One is going to be bearing. And if you remember correctly, a bearing is simply going to be something between 0 and 90, and it gives the quadrant definition. In our case here, we're starting from north, and we're going to the west, 1 degree, 52 minutes, 12 seconds. So that is my bearing. Now, if I simply want this in azimuth, azimuth, in this case, because I'm in the northwest quadrant, is going to be 360 degrees minus my 1 degree, 52 minutes, and 12 seconds. And that's going to be, what, 358 degrees, 07 minutes, and 48 seconds, correct? If I'm doing that in my head. So the final result for this line going from 1 to 3 gives me a distance of 568.78 feet with a direction of north 0, 1, 52, 12 west or an azimuth of 358 degrees, 07 minutes, 48 